Hi, Melanie Menschinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I'm sharing a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Stately Flowers 9. For this card, I am using what is called the No Line Coloring Technique, which is basically just stamping your image in a very light shade of ink and then coloring in with alcohol markers. It produces a very painterly look. I like to use the Gina K Designs Sweet Corn for this just what it sounds like. It's just a corn colored ink or kind of a straw color. If you don't have a yellow ink then I would recommend maybe a light tan or you can get away with any kind of ink that is going to be lighter than the lightest shade that you are coloring with. So for instance you might be able to get away with using a very light apricot. <clears throat> the other tools that you're going to need for this particular card are some Spectrum Nora markers. You can use alcohol markers as well. I'm going to be using the GB3, the OR1, and the OR2 for the petals. I'm using the CG1, the CG2, and the CG4 for those stems. And then finally I'm using the AB, excuse me, HB2 and the PL4 for the vase. Got the sweet corn pad like I said, and I'm also going to be using the black onyx to stamp the greeting and the accent. And then I have some pads for sponging on there. I've got the Ocean Mist and the Blue Raspberry. And you might decide that you want to keep your mat just a simple white. I love that clean look. But just that simple sponging is going to give this a time and place that that vase is sitting in a windowsill open to a beautiful spring day. The stamp set, obviously, and we've got some acrylic blocks. So use some large and small blocks for that. I've got a sponge dauber for the sponging. The cardstock I have, I will post the measurements below, but I have a turquoise sea base, I've got the fresh rasp, or, excuse me, fresh asparagus mat, and then the white which we're going to do our stamping on, and then I've got the sweet mango and the wild orchid mats. This is the Doris dandelion folder which Gina K sells, and I actually, I, I've already pre-embossed this just to save time. But I like to go ahead and put the mats in at the same time and then just emboss it once. Okay? All right, so let's begin by stamping our mat. You want to make sure that you have cleaned your stamp. I have a little bit of staining on this, but when I did this card, there was still just a little bit of residue, so you can see a tiny bit of a line. As you know, I always just keep going on that. But So make sure it's very clean so that you're not going to pick up another color on the edge. And then I'm inverting the picture today. I noticed this after I got my stamps, how nice that would look. Just stamping it upside down, it just gives you a ton more options for making your layouts. So I'm going to start with the sweet corn ink, and I'm going to stamp the picture at the bottom. So just ink up the bottom. Right there. And then we'll go ahead and do our flowers. And I'm going to cover it with just a piece of scratch paper, or you can use a post-it note. So I'm just gonna put it right over that edge. And then I'm just gonna put them right there. Okay, so when you lift that away, it looks like they're inside the vase. So I'm gonna start with coloring the stems. And I go a little bit more slowly Let's start with the CG2 because I don't want to go outside the line and I have a lighter outline so you will see when it crosses over but if you do that's okay since the outline is missing you can't really go outside the lines you're just going to have to fill it in so that it looks intentional. No one's going to see your image so that's something that you can change. Okay. Now let's go ahead and fill in the centers of these flowers. So today, let me put this here so that you can see where I'm going with my coloring. Wanted to make them green today, like the centers of Gerbera daisies that you see sometimes that have a pale green center or like a sunflower. Okay, now I'm going to add my darkest green. This is the CG4 and I'm going to go right underneath right underneath here where the flower is casting a shadow down onto the stem and on the underside of the leaves so I'm imagining the light coming down from the top 
okay? And then I'm gonna go back and I am going to blend it with my first shade. So I'm just gonna pull that down. And you'll notice the more times that you go over it, the more it's going to blend. And if you're not getting the results that you like with your coloring, if things just aren't popping, it's because you really need to have more contrast and more darker shades, I'm betting, in your coloring. And let's go ahead and add the darker green to the bottom here. And you might find that it's a little bit more difficult to shade when you don't have that hard outline to see where all of your color needs to go. So you might want to refer to the image sheet here, if that helps you. And so I'm just going to go over this and that's just going to blend right into the darker green. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the petals with this GB3. And so this is a nice apricot color. So I chose that sweet mango matte to kind of pick up the darkest orange that I'm going to be adding for my shadows. And I chose to do the vase that bright purple and then I chose my mattes later just because I really wanted to play off the yellow and the orange in this flower. Had I made the vase yellow, that would have been a nice card, but the purple, that really gives it some punch. So you're just gonna color that in circles. So you can still see your outline here where you need to go, but then it just disappears on those edges. All right, so now we need to add some shadows. So I'm gonna use this OR1, and I'm just going to trace some of those little veins and around the edge of this, that center, and then maybe just a little bit on the bottom of those petals and the ones that are behind here. And again, you can refer to this image to see where you want these dark lines to go and then if you feel like you're seeing them too much remember you can always go back and blend with that lighter color let's put a little here here okay so now we need our darkest orange and this is really going to make it come to life so just a little bit on each petal just doing some quick flicking strokes Here. We're coloring two flowers, so that's why this one takes a little bit longer to do. So back here. And it's done whenever you think it's done. Whenever you feel like I'm liking how that looks, then just leave it alone. And then if you want to go back with your lighter orange, you can blend these in as well. Okay, very simple. And then I remember mentioned these little dots the other day. You can make these orange, you can make them green, whatever you want to fill that in with. Okay, now let's do our vase. So I'm using the PL4, and I really want that hard edge of the vase to be defined. So before I start coloring, I'm just going to go along the edge and along the edge. Okay, and then instead of doing circles, I'm just going to do these lines coming in toward the center. And I think this looks a lot like a turned glazed pot where you see the stripes of the glaze going around it. Okay, all right, now let's take this HB2, and you'll notice we're going 
from a light color like this all the way down to PL4 and not doing any shades in between. And I think you're gonna be amazed just how much this is going to change the color of this deep purple that you just put down. So you see I'm just scratching that in there to the center. See, and the more you go over that, the more it's gonna disappear. And you can put a little bit of a highlight up here on the top of that. So the lightest colors, the ones that end in a one, have a lot more alcohol in them, and that is what gives them that blending ability. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of tip to tip that you've seen me doing. So keep the lighter marker in your dominant hand and lift a little bit of the darker color off of there. And we'll transition into that middle portion. And if you find that it's blended a little too much, you know, you might want to go back and define how dark you wanted that edge there. Okay, and this is consistent with putting all of our darkest shades, that shadow, on the left. Okay, now let's go ahead and do just a little bit of sponging here. I'm gonna start with my lighter blue. And I'm just gonna go off the edge of the mat. And if you're really concerned about getting any of that ink over your flowers, then by all means, Cover them with a mask, which is just the image stamped, cut out, and then placed over it to protect it. But for my sponging, I usually just go just around it. And you can even go over it a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit in there. See, and that doesn't do anything to your coloring. Now, if you want it to pop just a little bit more, you can add a darker shade of blue. So again, this is the blue raspberry, just a little bit on the corners. But just something to add a little more contrast. And then finally, we are going to add the greeting. So I have this best wishes greeting, and this works for so many different things, not just a wedding, but birthday, really anything. And I'm just gonna nest it right here between these two flowers. And then to pick up that black, I am going to use this little dotted accent that I have in here. You might have been wondering what that is for. And here I have an example to show you. I just made it like a little divider to put in between the state name and between the flower name so you can stack them with the state above or below like that. But you can also use it for accents or for making a dotted border around your mats. And I thought, you know, that would really pop on the vase to look like you have just a little detail there. And so I'm just gonna put that across the top and we are done. So then you would just layer that. I chose the fresh asparagus to really bring out the green and the stems. And then put that on top. And I actually put the mango layer in between. And then added some of the ribbon. And then mounted that onto the turquoise C base. And I used some foam squares just to give more dimension to the card. I hope you enjoyed this technique and this project. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more inspiration and ideas, and follow us on Stamp TV. Thank you for watching today.